Hello everyone, welcome back to Full Grown Gaming's Let's Play of Banjo-Kazooie. This is episode 3, and in this episode we're actually going to return to a previous area of, I was going to say castle, but it's really more of a lair, I guess. Is there really much of a difference between the two? I don't know. But regardless, we're going to be returning back to the this room over here, so not too far back. But now that we've, whoa, the camera angle got all weird. But now that we've unlocked these green pads, we can jump up here and open a new world. And in this case, it's actually called Clanker's Cavern. And Bottles, yeah, I was going to say, Bottles is going to tell us that we can actually put all of the pieces in at once. Watch how cool this is. There we go. I mean, I'm not sure, it doesn't save a whole lot of time. I guess later in the game when we have to put in probably 10 jiggies at once, maybe that could save a couple seconds. But right now, not too big of a time saver. But like I said, if you're going for a speed run, every second counts. And that is one way to save a couple of seconds. I did miss a few mumbo tokens in the previous level, but like I said, those don't really count for completion, and also, I mean, we don't have to have them for a while, so I'm gonna go back to those later. But before we go on, if you see down there in the bottom right corner, there's a tunnel kind of thing. We won't be going into that right now, but later in the game, we will be going in there. But right now, it doesn't really have any relevance to what we're doing, so we'll go in there later, like I said. But if we come in, is this the right one? No, uh, I want to go in the other one first. And the other, if you guys remember in the last episode, we talked to one of those, what are they called, the magic cauldrons or whatever. I had a problem deciphering if they were pots or kettles or whatever. Here's another one. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, it is a different color. This one's orange. I think the other one was purple or pink or something like that. And, I mean, I think, actually, wait a minute, I think there's a mumbo token up here. And, yep, speak of the devil, there's a mumbo token. But, I guess it is kind of a good thing that that cauldron isn't the same color, because what use would it be to warp one room over, you know? But later, obviously, you can see we have, there's two colors. I think there's three colors, so I think there's six in total. But I could be mistaken. It's been a long time since I've ever used that part of the game. Now, over there is Clanker's Cavern, but it looks like there's no way to get across. Fortunately, over here, there's actually a switch that we can hit which causes these little platform things to be raised out of the water. And if we go across them, if you see there's one right there that didn't get raised, there's actually a button on the other side that will raise that one as well. And if I remember correctly, I know I keep saying that a lot, but that's really because I don't remember quite, you know, what all these parts are. I think the painting or the picture to the next level is up there. So we'll be probably, I'm not sure if we're going to do that in this episode, but we will be doing that obviously pretty soon. Now, Clanker's Cavern. This is the third level, if I if I remember correctly. And it's probably one of my least favorite levels in the game, if only because it's an underwater level. And if you've been with Full Grown Gaming for any amount of time at all, you know that I hate underwater levels in most games, just because they're so hard to control sometimes. I do kind of like how this game makes it... I mean, the swimming controls aren't too bad in this game, but I wouldn't say that they are the most clean in the world either. One thing that makes it useful, or like feasible to swim in this game, I guess you could say, is that you can choose to swim fast with Ban uh, Kazooie, or you can choose to swim slow with Banjo. So the reason I went all the way around there was, first of all, to get all those jiggies, or uh, gin uh, notes, and also to get this Jinjo right here. And if you needed a, if you didn't see me collecting those gold feathers, we'll be getting to that pretty soon as well. Alright, so now let's go down here. And we're going to be getting right into the swimming here. Hopefully I don't make too much of a fool of myself trying to swim down here. And it has been a long, long time since I've played this level, so hopefully I remember where everything is at. And if you look straight ahead, I feel like a tour guide or something, you'll see a giant mechanical, it's what they called a garbage grinder, or whatever they called it, and his name is Clanker. As far as I understand it, he's actually a, like a, car, a garbage compactor kind of thing, built by Grunty. So he's not even real, but this is our, what is this, the second shark in the game so far that we've seen? This one, fortunately, unlike the one in Treasure Trove Cove, is actually a nice shark, but we have to free him before he can help us. And if you're doing this level, you pretty much want to save this guy by going down here and freeing him from the bottom. Because if you don't, I think there's only like two or three jiggies you can get in this area without saving him, so you might as well go ahead and do that. But uh, one thing down here that I don't like I mean, I guess it's part of the challenge, though, is that there's a bunch of Jiggy- or j I'm gonna get notes and Jiggies mixed up all the time, I can already tell. There's a bunch of notes, and there's actually a Jinjo down here. So you're gonna have to plan your time accordingly, and if you see on the left, there's actually a timer of sorts. I'm not sure, but I think it would make sense if each one of those things counts for 10 seconds. You know, each one of the little honeycombs. 
So it looks like you have about 60 seconds underwater. Luckily, they put this fish down here that will spit out bubbles, and somehow that makes you able to... I guess you can breathe in the air and the bubbles, even though I'm not sure if that makes any physical physics sense at all. But if you swim through the keyhole, or the key ring, I guess, three times, it will allow Clanker to return to the surface. And even as a kid, this really didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, because he's not real. He doesn't need clean water. And even if he did, I doubt there's a whole lot more oxygen up at the top. You know, I mean, he said that he wanted clean water. Oh, fresh air! Apparently I was wrong. Apparently Clanker needs fresh air, so maybe that uh, it makes a little more sense than I originally thought. At first I was thinking, there's probably not that much more oxygen at the top of the water up there. I mean, I don't know. But I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these j I almost said it, notes. See, if you're only a little bit off, you're gonna miss these notes down here. And I better uh, swim into this bubble right here, because if I don't, I'm gonna die. There we go. Actually, I'm gonna get another bubble just to be sure. If I drown down here, that is probably gonna be one of the most embarrassing things that's ever happened on this channel. Because I think in the first episode I said I don't plan on dying all that much, and it's kinda hard to drown in this game, to be quite honest. Alright, so I think there's gonna be 22 notes after I get done down here. Well, there's 21. I know I missed one around this corner somewhere. See, the reason I don't- this is probably the, mo the most difficult part of the level, if only because you have to be down here for so long. Come on, get the bubble! No, great, great, great. I think I have enough time to get this thing and go back up without having to get another bubble, but I think I'm not gonna chance it because, like I said, if I drown, I will probably have to hang up the controller, hang up the microphone, and never do another episode because I've already made a promise that I would not die. And especially drowning is probably one of the more embarrassing ways to go. Alright, now that I'm back up here, a little closer to the surface, you can see that there's a hidden honeycomb underneath this little pipe here. And if you didn't know it was here, and if you didn't happen to see it underwater, I don't think you would have ever stumbled across that, because there's no way to go into that pipe from the top. So, alright, so now that we've gotten that, let's see, what do we need to do here? There's so much stuff here, and there's so much dis misdirection, there's so many different ways to go in this area that you can kind of get confused. So I'm gonna come up here because I know there's some notes over here. I almost fell off there. And like I said, I did miss a couple Mumbo tokens in the previous level, so I'm gonna try and get the ones in here. As far as I remember, there's five in each level. But like I said, I don't even think you have to use them all throughout the game. I think there's more Mumbo tokens than there are transformations you have to do, so. Unless I'm mistaken, I don't see why that would be the case. But as far as I know, that is. Now you might hear a Jinjo whistling for us, and that's because he's underneath this little panel, or grate, or whatever you want to call that. Now if we come, let's see, I think, yeah, I have to be careful here because I don't want to slip off. I think the other honeycomb is in this little grate here. Alright! And I think, yep, I was going to say, I think that's going to be the sixth, or seventh, I forgot already how many we need, alright? But, yeah, we got an extra honeycomb there, and I think that is the second extra honeycomb that we've gotten so far in the game. And I think by the end of the game, you can get four extra ones, if I'm not mistaken. Down here, I'm almost positive that there's going to be a Jiggy. Or a No, who knows. Alright, a Jiggy. I think this is going to be the first one that we got so far. And if I don't hurry up, I'm going to drown. That is probably... That is the only reason that this level is hard at all, because almost all of it is underwater. And you've got to be really careful that you don't drown, obviously. But later in the game, there's a level called... Actually, I don't want to get the name wrong. I always get it mixed up with a... A level in Mario 64, so I'm not even going to say the name of the level, but it's probably more difficult than this one even. So, I'll probably have even more of a tr like more trouble trying to do that level. Now, before I go up to the surface and take care of everything up there, there is... I have to get all these G's. Oh, I did it again! Notes! Jeez! I have to get all of these notes in this pipe here. And there's also a Jinjo down here somewhere that I want to get. I think it's the blue Jinjo because, I, like I said, I want to try and get out of the water as soon as possible. Now, the blue Jinjo is in one of these little portholes on the side, and I always get it mixed up, so let me see if I can try and remember which one it is. Alright, let's dive again. If I, I think that is the one right there where we came out of. Oh, wait, there was a Mumbo token over there. Might as well go get it, because I've already mentioned Mumbo tokens about 500 times in this episode. And I kind of am a little disappointed that there weren't more transformations in this game. It seems like, what if we have one in the first level and none so far? 
In Banjo-Tooie, as far as I remember, there are more transformations, like one in every level. And there's actually another character in Banjo-Tooie called Wumba, who has sort of a... Actually, she's the one that does the transformations in that game. Mumbo actually does not. So I'm not going to give you Mumbo's role in that game quite yet, because that's a little bit of a spoiler, I guess. Because I will end up doing that game, but... I don't know why that came to my mind. Anyway, before we go... We can actually go into Clanker. But before we do that, I want to come over here, because there are two notes over here I remember specifically, because these notes always gave me trouble as a kid, because I always forgot that they were here, and I accidentally canceled out the shock pad jump there. See, here's one, and if we keep going, I think you can sort of see it over there. Uh, not really, but it's over there, I promise. And I'm not sure if I ever got to explain what those golden notes, or the golden golden feathers were for. Those are actually invincibility feathers, which we will be using pretty soon. Alright, so now that we're down here, I'm, I try to get a perfect shot here. I, apparently I can't go into first person. There we go. In this game, it's different. On the Nintendo 64, I think you just had to use the uh, C buttons. In this game, you actually have to use the Y button, so that's kind of weird. See, I'm getting my Nintendo 64 controls mixed up already. I'm trying to shoot eggs, and I'm going into Talon Trot mode. But you can see that he has a, a pimpin' gold tooth over here, and you can actually shoot it out and go inside and get a jiggy. And there's actually, I think there are, like I said, probably six or seven notes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Jiggies that have something to do with the, the shark here. So like I said, might as well get the the key taken care of or the lock at the bottom of the, the water taken care of as soon as possible. And there's also a mumbo token in here, in that room back there, but you have to go to the other side of the shark and shoot out the other two to be able to get to that mumbo token. There might be some sort of trick to get it without having to shoot out the other tooth, but as far as I know, you have to actually do that. And you might be wondering why there's all these rings in here in the middle of a garbage compactor. For some reason, Clanker has a, an obstacle course inside of him, which makes no sense, but I think it, it is pretty entertaining. Like, I kind of like this obstacle course. I don't know why. There's actually a lot of obstacle courses, it seems like, in the Banjo series, especially in Banjo-Tooie, but... The way that people in speedruns, or the tool-assisted speedruns, do this obstacle course is awesome because you can actually stand on the, like, the rings themselves before they disappear to get a little more air, you know? So that's pretty cool. Alright, I think this is probably going to be the last ring right here. Let's see. Yep, there we go. And what that actually does is raise the water level. Like I said, not really sure why that raises the water level, but it does, and that makes it... Possible. I was going to make, say it makes it easier, but it makes it possible in the first place to get that jiggy. But I'm, I'm not going to get that quite yet. The way that I go through this level is kind of haphazard and stuff, I, as I'm sure you guys can tell. But there's also another Jinjo down here. How many Jinjos do we have? Alright, this is going to be the last Jinjo. I thought that was going to be it. And it's purple. Turn around, man. Dang. See, that's why, like... It's kind of hard to make precision turns in the water. I mean, I guess it should be kind of hard, but when there's something down there and there's little tentacles waving around that hurt you and stuff like that, it's kind of sometimes frustrating to be hurt by something like that when you were, when it was really the controls of the game's fault, if you know what I mean. All right, so now that we're up here, there's that ginger. Oh my lord! I cannot get the names of these things right for my life. I've called you. I'm just about to stop. <laughs> I just said notes, Joes, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Notes, Jiggies, and Jinjos, I'm getting all mixed up. But now that I've gotten that, I can go up the tail here. And this part always was... Oh, go, 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 go! Yes, I made it. That part is kinda, was kind of hard as a child for me, because the tail moves directions and stuff like that. So when it moves like that, it's hard to judge which direction to run and how fast you should run and stuff like that. But, is there another... No, there's not. I was gonna say, is there a Jinjo up here? But I've already got the, the Jiggy for that. And also, I didn't, don't think I mentioned these at the beginning of the level. These things come out of the walls. But to take care of them, all you gotta do really is jump and... I think that's called the Rat-a-Tat... Tat attack or something like that. Or, you can just roll under them. I think that you can just get right by them if they get too close. Alright, so we got the Jiggy on the back of the sh I was gonna say the ship. On the back of the shark here. So now we can we can go to the front of the shark, I guess. And to do so, we need to jump on this little... I don't even know what this is, really. Like a bolt kind of thing is what it looks like when it comes out. 
or a screw or something. I'm not sure why that's there exactly, but... Or why it gets forced out like that. He's kind of like a, a whale more than a shark. But, regardless, it allows us to come up here and get this jiggy. So what is that? Six? Alright, making pretty good progress. Like I said, it's been a long, long, long time since I've played this level. So hopefully I remember where everything is at. Alright, oh! Grunty uh, switch here. Let's see what this does. It raises the eyes out there by Treasure Trove Code. These things are not that... I was just about to say they're not that hard to get past as I get hit by one. They're not all that hard to get past, but... You do need to be careful because if you get hit, they'll knock you back. And it's possible for them to knock you back into another one and into another one. And it's just a vicious cycle sometimes. So be careful if you're low on health going through that area. But compared to what's coming up, that little razor blade twirling area is nothing compared to this area up here. I'm going to leave that jiggy for now and come back for it in a second because... Up here we have another try like gauntlet we have to run through. Look at that! That's ridiculous. But first we need to talk to Bottles, who might make it a little bit easier for us. And he says this move uses basically Kazooie's wings as a shield. And to use it, you have to use those gold feathers that we were talking about earlier. Alright, Bottles, come on. Like I said, I did like in the Nintendo 64 version how you could chain or like skip dialogue, you know? At least he does give us a, I was going to say, a shipment of gold feathers. And fills up our life. Man, he's actually hooking us up. Maybe I shouldn't be so quick to interrupt him, I guess. Alright, how does this work in this game? It's been a while, so... I probably should have listened to Bottles <laughs> as he was telling me how to use it. Maybe I can do the, uh... Oh, there we go. So I got that. But it is actually possible to run through these without using that. But I'm not going to even attempt that because that is a, an upper echelon speedrunning move that I've never once done in my life. But I made it. And I like the fact that they give you extra gold feathers down here so you don't have to worry about it on the way down here. You know what? Actually, I want to try it. Here we go. Oh! Oh, I made it! That is awesome! <laughs> yes! I never thought... In, I can't believe I just did that. I've, I've tried that so many times and I've never once made that. But, we, I think that's, I see, I'm like speechless. I can't believe I made that. It looks like there's one more Jiggy, and I, if I remember correctly, I remember exactly where that thing is, so. Clanker's Cavern was nowhere near as hard as I thought it was going to be. I remember, like I said, back in the day, this level, or maybe I didn't say this, but back in the day, this level used to give me so much frustration. See, this one little note right here is giving me frustration, but the whole level was like that when I was a kid, because I just, I couldn't do it, I guess, at... When did this game come out? 1999, I think? I was five then. Maybe my motor skills weren't up to par, but regardless, not too hard right now. If you see that green little opening down there, that's where we gotta go at this point in time. Let's see, did I already get the... I just wanna make sure that I got the empty honeycombs. Yep, so I'm missing eight notes and one jiggy. And as far as, if I remember correctly, they're all in that one little tunnel over there. That jiggy over there is actually kind of fun to get. Because it's really one of the only Jiggies in this whole game that I can remember where you have to kill enemies to get it. Like, a specific number. You'll see in a second. We're almost there. Alright, so now that we're here... Whoa. See, the camera angle is kind of weird in this game, too. These little crabs talk to you, and they're like mutants, I guess? Maybe because of the garbage that goes in here? I'm gonna... Oh, no. Okay, I missed a note, but I'll come back and get that. It seems like crabs in this game have a lot of- Oh man, I missed another one. Forget that. I kind of like to have them all in one area before I kill them. It's just- I don't know. Is he standing on that note? Oh my, come here, kid. You think you're gonna camp on my note? Take that. I was gonna say I like to get them all at once, but it looks like that's just not gonna be possible. Alright, there should be one more. If I remember correctly, there are four here. I'm gonna leave them over here so I can make a quick getaway up to the top here. Snippet Mutants. Apparently that's their name, like I never, I guess they're just crabs, but anyway, that is going to be the tenth and final Jiggy. So, not that bad. I thought that was going to take a whole lot longer than it really did. I think we made it in under 20 minutes. Let me check. And, well, wow, under s almost 16 and a half minutes. That's pretty good. I mean, like I said, back in the day, that probably would have been an hour endeavor there. I guess it'll only be fitting to end this episode, like I have, I think the other couple of episodes I've done the same thing, where I go back to the main world area, 
to get the the Grunty's Lair Jiggy that appeared. And if you didn't see it, I guess it was about halfway through this episode, if you just happen to skip to the end where I'm talking about this, when I hit that note, or that little switch in, what's his name, Clanker? It caused Grunty's eyes to pop up in that one little room. And I'm pretty sure all we gotta do there is ground pound them to the floor, and they will <laughs> spit out a Jiggy. So, yeah, you know, also that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Why would Grunty make Jiggies available like that? I don't know. Alright. So also, there's a pretty cool speed running move up there. Well, I guess it's way too late to use it now, so I'm not even going to try and show you. But you can jump from that little pipe where the entrance exit pad thing is and jump up to the mumbo token without having to come all the way over here. That saves probably around 30 seconds or so. Oh, I already killed that one apparently. But to get back over there, I think you just got to come back around here and jump. I mean, I don't- whoa. See the camera angle? Sometimes you'll be in the air and that thing will turn around like that and screw you over and make you fall, so... Luckily, I wasn't in the air when that happened. Alright, so now, let's see... Did I already hit that switch? Well, it looks like it's not hit, but it looks like the little pipe over there is open, so... Apparently, I did hit it. In the next episode, we're gonna go over there. If you guys remember Brentilda, or however you pronounce her name, she's also up there and she will give us three more clues. And I think I remember the other ones, it was like moldy cheese toothpaste, uh, the witch's warehouse, and I forgot the other one. Oh well. Alright, so now we're back in this room. Let's go ahead and ground pound these switches to that one. Or eyes, or whatever you want to call it. Alright, see I knew that- I love how it puts it like right on the bridge of her nose. So how many jiggies is that? That's probably... Well, it says we have four. That doesn't make much sense. Oh, I think that's four for the Grunty's Lair portion of the game. Yeah, so that's what that means. But I guess as far as this episode is concerned, we are done here because in the next episode, we are going to open up, as is classic for this Let's Play so far, another level. And the next level is actually, in my opinion, easier than Clanker's Cavern. Clanker's Cavern was kind of a curveball. Because if you didn't know to release Clanker, you'd probably be screwed. And also, early in the game, that level was pretty hard. So I guess I'm just going to go over here. And I guess I'll end the episode right here. Because I don't want to force Brentilda in this episode where she's not really wanted, if you know what I mean. So I guess I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for watching episode 3 of Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie. And I'll see you guys back for the next episode.